Piecing together what went wrong in your Python application can sometimes feel like you're trying to solve a complex puzzle. Now, a lot of junior, intermediate, and senior devs are gonna be using the Python print statement inside their Python code. And you should absolutely not be doing this inside your application, especially if you wanna stand out in the Python world. In this video, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide on how you can implement logging into your Python application so you can look like a pro compared to the people that are using print statements. All right, so if you're anything like me, before I started learning how to log in Python, I would just throw these print errors kind of everywhere within my application. So I would say print error or just print and just kind of make up my own sentence that kind of went with whatever I was doing at the time to say that, hey, the application broke here. But since then, I've really been putting a lot of emphasis into logging. So I decided to make a video on logging in Python. So let's go ahead and just remove this big print error application broke here. And now one pro with Python is logging is already part of Python. So we can go ahead and say import logging. And now after this, I will just copy and paste this in because no one will just watch me type it out. But there's really five different critical ways of writing logs. And there's logging.debug, which means you are logging something that's within a debug logging.info, which means you're just giving some information about your application. There's warning, which means something is going wrong. Error, something is definitely wrong. And then critical is like, hey, you need to look at this right now. So if we go ahead and just run this application by doing a Python 3 main.py, after I save the application, we can see that we are going to get three things printed to our terminal. We're going to get our warning which is a warning message. So we're getting our warning and then the sentence I typed inside here. We're getting error and we're getting critical. And the reason we're only getting these three and not the two above is logging in Python starts off at a default level of warning and higher. And we can adjust this level within our logging basic configuration. So underneath our import, we can go ahead and say logging.basicconfig. And now inside here, we can pass in a level and say, hey, we want to start at our logging.info. If we do this now, instead of just getting those three, we are going to get those four of info, warning, error, and critical. If we want to include debug, we can go ahead and say we want to include debug. And now throughout our whole application, we are going to get every single log printed to our terminal throughout our entire application. Now, another really helpful thing we can add within our basic configuration is formatting. Now, formatting can be kind of confusing. There's some formatting documentation within the Python docs, but I'll be showing you the top three. And right after level, we can say comma format. And we can format our logs. That means we can add timestamps before the log is captured. We can say where it's breaking within the application or where we're capturing this log. I guess it doesn't necessarily mean that it's broken, but they can be kind of confusing to write. So inside here, we need to create a string. And inside this string, we need to say percent sign, parentheses, ASC time with an S outside the parentheses. And then I'm just gonna add a dash where we can say percent sign parentheses level name with an S on the end. And then lastly, we're going to say percent parentheses message with an S on the end. And what this is really doing, this is saying print the timestamp. And then we're saying the level name, which is debug info warning error or critical. And then we're going to add the message. And that's the message that we are passing in with each kind of log that we're adding throughout our application. So if we went ahead and ran this application now, we can see that instead of just getting the generic five different types of logs, we are now getting the date, the timestamp, the debug or the level warning all the way through, and then the message attached to each specific log. Now, a lot of times throughout um, development, we don't necessarily want it just to be printing to the terminal. That's not super helpful to us. If this application is like deployed in production, we're going to want to see a file that is going to have all of the logs throughout our application. Now we can do this by passing into our basic configuration, a file name. So right here we can say file name, 
equals, and I'm just going to say text.log. Now, if I open up my directory, we can see that right now it's in a video directory and we just have this main.py file that we see right here. But when we classify a file name that is equal to text.log, it is going to create the log within the directory with all of our logging information for the entire application. So now if I went ahead and say Python 3 main.py, we can see that nothing was printed to our terminal, but instead we now have a text.log file and if we open up the text.log file, we can see the date timestamp each level with the message attached. And now this is going to be a super common way inside a production application or even a UAT or dev application, something that's not running on your machine, because you're definitely going to want a external file, usually a .log file that's going to have all of the logs for your application. Now, another really promising way of looking at logs is you can log exceptions. So for example, if I delete all of this and we wanted to say try one divided by zero, which we know is not possible. So then we want to say accept zero division error as error. We can then say logging dot exception error and pass in the error. And now if we run the application, we know that this actually just broke. So inside our text.log file, we can see that there's now a trace back that links back to the exact file location of where the error occurred within our zero division error, which prints division by zero. All right, so this is super cool. This is kind of the basics on how we can use logging, but let's see it in an actual example where we're creating a class. So I'm going to create a new file called animal.py. And the very first thing I'm going to say is import logging. Where I'm going to grab pretty much this exact same logging information, but instead of saying text.log, I'm going to say animal.log. So we know that it's a different file for our logs versus our test file. I'm then going to say class pet, where inside my class pet, I want to say def initialization, where we can pass in our self, our type, and our age. Self.type equals type, and self.age equals age. So we're just going to kind of be able to create a new pet that has a type and an age. So we can say, like, cat is the age of four, or dog is the age of two whatever we really want. We can then say logging.info, where we can create an F string of created a new pet object, where we can pass in the type and the age. All right, and then right outside here, let's go ahead and say just pet one equals a new pet of cat and eight and then pet two is also equal to a new pet where we can pass in dog of three all right so now if we go ahead and run this application we can see that nothing happened here but inside our animal.log we can see that we documented inside a log info file the date the time is an info, so we're just giving info to the dev or whoever has access to the logs, that we created a new pet object of cat and eight, and we created a new pet object of dog and three. Now, logging is super important in Python. I highly, highly, highly suggest that you use logging over print statements for pretty much all of your code. They are much more helpful and they allow you to keep history significantly better than print statements.